our first forest for you. That would be a better gift, how typical. <laughs> um, emissary, as you look at Asha, through those eyes, yellow like a wolf's, When the gods first came to Exandria, the Wild Mother stewarded the world. The whole of the world came to a place of raw and surging elements. Chaos, lava, magma, lightning storms, a place of ruin and destruction and chaos and shaped life, ultimately resilient, nature itself, the one who found home. <laughs> Windows of stone buildings and unnatural arcane light a place of pure mortal imagination, bound by rules, but doing everything in their power to forget the world of nature. Like a bad dream, like a crib they have outgrown. The gifts of a mother tossed aside to embrace a new vision of life without gratitude. And you look at Asha and see that perhaps the fiercest of the gods, the most inconquerable, the most resilient, is hurting. I scoot up and lean. I am tired and I am hungry. But you know I am, you would be the only one who knows. I have been hungry since we came here. I'm always hungry. <coughs> Everything is always so hungry. Everywhere. Miles below the city, perhaps even the ground itself is hungry. And we move from this place. <laughs> we move from this place. Uh, as we do so, um, uh, we now go to uh, a very secret place uh, hidden behind a large industrial door. Uh, Doors open. <laughs> uh, uh, doors open, and a small chamber departs in the Ars district. This is a district of industry and um, uh, fine things. You see that you're in a large glass blowing factory, an arcane glass blowing factory. Uh, Salaha uh, leads the way. Umleta is right behind you. I think Amir, you're looking around, seeing all these wild glass artifacts, like shapes, impossible polyhedral shapes floating within glass spheres. Of course, it's the middle of the night, so there's no one attending. And yet somehow the door was left a crack open. At the back of this factory, you see that there is a complex, massive circular lock, almost like the wheel to a vault door. Uh, and as Silaha approaches, the lock opens two oculi uh, and beholds you. <gasps> Silaha! <gasps> An honor and a gift! you this evening. The gift is mine. <gasps> As always, an honor to make a path for the chosen one. 
and the head spins <laughs> around. Uh, and as it spins it's around, so cool. um, uh, you see this aorm. <laughs> uh, this aormaton, who is just a stationary lock at the back of this factory, um, turns around, and suddenly um, you hear music and you see steps. Beautiful marble, long hanging blue banners, a curving marble bar, liquor up around, and you look a mirror and see a sea of a like marble and then like red velvet cushioned grotto, dancing little lights as sort of uh, arcane automata fireflies begin to spin through space. And up on a massive bandstand, you see that a gorgeous aormaton constructed of black steel within a white platinum chest piece, almost like a tuxedo, uh, comes out and says, ladies, gentlemen, designations heretofore unmentioned, I am your master of ceremonies, chorus, and what a wonderful evening to behold. Please welcome your proprietor, the chosen one. The banners shimmer, and you see images of Salaha's face <laughs> all over. Uh, <laughs> you also see my eyes go no. from like orange to green. The no, gold I... shimmering uh, that you saw on my kind of metal body begins to just engulf my body as I turn into this golden aormaton, and I just raise my arms. Yes. Uh, the it all whole, makes it. It all makes it. The whole place no. cheers. Amira, you see, you see that that your friend, your brother, has been fully cheating as worship funnels into him. Whoosh! Um, the chosen one! And just steel hands clapping as hard as they can. Um, you see that chorus says, Salaha, proprietor of the Ars Elysia, we welcome you with open arms and other probasi as well. And you see that, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you see also, there are, this is mostly aormatons. You see that on a bench, there are two aormatons that have these like soft chain link lips that are kissing passionately on a bench. There's so many people that are like cheersing, cheersing with like drinks from the bar. You see there's a multi eight armed aormaton bartender behind the bar pouring drinks in this. And you also feel a wave of powerful arcane might hiding this place from detection as this grotto of poetry and beauty and passion unfolding in the heart of brutalist Aeor unfolds in this place. As Chorus said, uh, you look around and there's a, you see there's a couple humans here. There's one human partially disrobed with an Aormaton lover sitting on their lap. You look over in the other place, you see that there appear to be some demons that are taking off their bindings and winking as they <laughs> hand their bindings away. Um, Umleta. Uh, <laughs> Tell's like, wait, where, where, where is this? Where is this? Where is this? I went on the wrong <laughs> list. <laughs> 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 Damn it. Give me, give me the Instagram, man. Wait, where is this place? Where's, where's the password? Yeah. Do I need a card? Who do I call? Wrong God. <laughs> <laughs> Just start a reverse bondage club. <laughs> <laughs> what's taking off the bed? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you see, um, uh, you see, Umleta sort of looks around as two massive constructs that have little like. Uh, like little cufflinks on fabric cuffs on massive weaponized arms. Be like, your weapons, please, my like, Yeah, I kind of turn. I'm like, oh, it's a no weapons policy here, darling. And Leda goes, <laughs> well, I don't know how possible that's going to be, Salaha. Mm -hmm. And uh, puts the, uh, gives her bow and arrow over. Um, and you see, as you begin to descend the steps, uh, Chorus says, uh, Patrons of the Ars Elysia, the drinks are cold, the band is hot, and what the gods cannot see, I'll never tell. Two, three, four, and the band <laughs> strikes up and just starts playing. And there's just so many aormatons dancing, like one of them spinning a human mortal around. Uh, and you guys walk down uh, into this incredible grotto. And I go straight for like the little private section area and just sort of sit, but I can see everything and everyone can see me. And I just sort of sit there and I'm like, <sighs> uh, Almost 30 years 
I've been on Exandria this time and have never found a place like this. Oh, you've been missing out. <laughs> um, a beautiful Aormaton dancer walks up and you see that she comes over with a small chilled bottle uh, of what looks like some sort of elven wine and places it in front of you. Uh, and then you see she takes a small decanter, this little golden bottle uh, that looks like it has a form of synthetic oil in it. And you see that she says, chosen one, the finest, and hands it over to you and says, may I? Please. And you see that she pours some on your artificed joints and begins to rub them in uh, with these <laughs> fingers. Um. <laughs> what are we doing here? We're supposed to be finding information. I mean, please, go. Have fun. Enjoy. Ask questions. It's totally free and fun over here. Salaha. Yes. You know, there, <laughs> there is a purpose to this. Mm-hmm. And Just we do robotic have hands a, right in those lats as you're having this conversation. We do have a, a finite amount of time. Mm. Mm. Yes. <laughs> finite. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking... If, please, actually, just, could, could, we have the, could, could we have the space, please? Oh, very well. Um, you see that uh, the sort of uh, Amartan dancer says, I am Tuar Elohen. Is there any way that I can make you feel good? Yes, but in maybe later. <laughs> Very well. She bows and walks away. You see Umbleda looks around and says, you are a clown. <laughs> <laughs> Go join the circus then. <laughs> she says, fine. I'll get to work. And you see that she uh, slinks off into the shadows. Um, uh, she can call you a clown all you want. You see that Salah is like glowing with worship. Yeah. <laughs> well, I kind of look to you and I'm like, look, I've been thinking on the way here. Is it really that bad? What exactly are, are you talking about? What is, is, is that bad? I mean, look at this. No, this. It's beautiful. This is beautiful. That is horrible. And the weapon being created is the end. <laughs> the end? But tell me, what's wrong with the end? No, this is the thing about beauty, darling. <laughs> it's all based on things that are finite. You desire the end? Yes. Maybe I do. For the time that I have spent here, I have seen this, and I have witnessed it, and I have enjoyed it, and to think, to think it could all be gone like that, that is beauty. It is. I'll be honest with you, because you're the only one I can be honest to. I'm tired. I just want to enjoy this. And yes, okay, fine, maybe it is possibly my fault that we are here, and that hangs on to me, hangs on to me and tortures me. But <laughs> there is something quite artistically beautiful about it. Weaving our own end. So yes, I want to ask you now, while we're here, enjoying this, is it really that bad? Why can't we just... Let it all happen and go and finish? I get up and I sit right next to Salaha. Very close to your face. If it's an end you want, darling, I can make that happen. But I didn't work an entire lifetime to have it end before I experience the infinite. <laughs> That's all our problem. It's all about ourselves, and <laughs> at least I have the, well, 
confidence to actually accept it. Just because you want an end doesn't mean everyone does. All right. Fine. I'll play along. But I just want you to think for a moment. And mm. Take this all in. And know that you're asking to destroy all of this. Just in this location. We destroy this location so you can create it over and over again in other places. Zulaha, you let this one place live. You never experience it again. You hear Damn the crowd yeah. erupts in cheers. And as you turn to look, you see that there is a elven woman weeping. Uh, holding onto her face, and you see that an Aormaton woman is down on one knee, lasers moving from her fingertips as she moves them in space, and wrought in pure magic before her begins a diamond that moves then into gold and forms a ring. And the Aormaton woman hands it up. The elven woman begins weeping, and you see Chorus, the master of ceremonies, says, Beautiful, love eternal, here within the Oz Elysia. Uh, and you watch as the uh, woman picks up the Aormaton and twirls her around, and they begin dancing on the dance floor. Well, I guess we better put ourselves to work. I don't actually trust that halfling to do anything out here, except cause more mayhem. Give me a, an insight check, Salaha. 15. Amira has said you can create this place over and over again. After all, without you, would this place have even been created? Maybe it's true. The Factorum Malleus could rob the world of its gods. Perhaps Eor is the price to pay to prevent that from happening. You watch these two lovers twirl on the dance floor. If you created this space again, would they be there dancing like they are now? Mm. Come, let's talk to Forex. He's a bartender over here. We'll deal with him, ask him if he's heard anything, seen anything. And if we begin there, and he should probably lead us somewhere else and go somewhere quite nice and maybe get a drink at the same time as we can. <laughs> I got to say thank you very much for listening to me. I know I had my outburst, but to be honest with you, I quite enjoyed listening to myself talk. But <laughs> you do make a lot of sense. I understand. Right then, no dilly-dallying, let's go. And I kind of get up and move towards the bar. Um, you move towards the bar. You see there sort of eight multi-articulated long arms with like shakers and mixers and small, you know, arcane citrus fruits rimming the edge of strange glasses. You see there's one that appears to just carbonate things as the glass is enchanted, like liquors go into it and <laughs> bubbles start to pour up. Uh, you see Forex Teneman. Um, Forex has a perfectly spherical head with a ring of like bronze around it and four oculi so he can kind of look in all directions. He looks over, <laughs> boss, good to see you. Weren't expecting you tonight. Oh, Forex, <laughs> the old seeing, all knowing. Please tell me, how have you been? How have I been? B -b 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 busy, always busy. Mm. Hi, Miss, can I get you a drink? No. Forex, we're wondering if you can help us. <laughs> Don't mind my friend <laughs> over here. Still needs to wet her appetite a bit. We are looking for some information, delicate information. Tell me. <clears throat> if you're looking for delicate information, we got some lingerie someone threw on top of the top shelf. <laughs> it's been a crazy night. Zoom, whole do torso we, spins around. But do we really have to get rid of this? It's, it's just <laughs> wonderful. Just transport him somewhere else. <laughs> Fine. Um, Listen, we are looking for something, someone. You wouldn't have heard any talk of a 
being of celestial energy maybe gracing somewhere within a or Funny you should mention, boss. There's a stiff who's been at the end of the bar drinking milk and honey. <laughs> Zzz, a joke. He says, he looks down and uh, you see that there is a cloaked figure at the far end of the bar near the flap over by where the restrooms are. Um, very quiet because the vast majority of denizens here don't need to use a restroom of any kind. Um, you see that, uh, <laughs> you uh, see that this cloaked figure uh, moves a hand out to adjust uh, what looks like a small glass of water on the bar and you see that uh, the skin is like a deep, muscular teal, sort of a strange, like, sheen to it, almost metallic. You see, he says, he's been coming in here for a while now, past few days, I would say, but he uh, came in here tonight uh, with a fellow, another stranger, uh, he's about, I don't know, seven and a half feet tall. Hmm. Um, he looks over uh, and says, you sure I can't get you anything? Sure. Um, you hear from within your rubs, I wouldn't mind a drink. <laughs> and the little glass imp cage in there sort of speaks to you. I look down. He goes, he looks up out of the glass, like, huh? up at your face and says, I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but... Everything that happened in that chamber was so crazy. I think you, I think you guys are the gods. Am I wrong? No. That was so nuts. No. <laughs> said, I, I won't. I won't tell. I won't tell. He was sealed. I thought he was sealed. <laughs> He was just like, <laughs> lefty loosey, <laughs> righty tighty. Like, fuck's sake. I'm like, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm looking at you, looking down. I'm like. Is everything all right? <laughs> in your head. Oh, in your head. Yeah. You hear. Imp. In my boobs. <laughs> and then all, you, all you hear is, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, I look down and I go, well, what would you like? Uh, um, I am called Slitch. And S I am an Not imp. Really? But you, I think I'm from clues from how you spoke. If you are... Come out. Am I allowed out? Just sit uh, <laughs> come. I, I, I don't want to talk to my boobs. <laughs> and that makes one of us. And you see, he pops, <laughs> he pops out on the bar. No. Uh, looks around. You see a couple demons look over at this little imp. He looks around and you see he goes, listen, I am bound to the service of the military might of Aeor, but I would love a chance to betray. <laughs> I am Slitch. You are, I think, if I am not much mistaken, maybe the goddess of death? Oh, shit. <laughs> Just from some of the things you said, you had a, you were talking about death and endings, and I, I am very clever, and, this is a huge, I'm not, I think it should be obvious, this is an absolutely enormous opportunity for me. <laughs> <laughs> Can I glean oh from, my, from my knowledge Switches of... On the cover. <laughs> from my knowledge of arcane objects mm -hmm. and whatnot, is he bound to this glass, it, yes. or is he going to be able to escape from me? He, you can tell that he is still bound to the glass, and you can actually feel an aura of about 30 feet. Okay. Like I want to make sure he's not going to run. He, you don't he think he, you think if that glass broke, you'd be in trouble, mm -hmm. but it looks like he's not going to run. Okay. Um, you How see, big is he? he is f standing on the table about that big. Oh my God. He's a little guy. Cutie. He's a real Henson ass. He's uh -huh. like, like little like pointy red nose, long red bat ears, claws. He got, he's like really bow legged to stand up. He, he like, he can't kind of stand straight up. Like he's, Oh, come see some Even He appears more comfortable in a partial squat, like his butt lower than his knees, like in the saddle. That's like where he wants to be. So he goes, 
it was several hours before I was bound to the service of a drunk subway cop. And now <laughs> I find myself in the company of quite a more powerful host. <laughs> <laughs> Um, look, I'll let you deal with this. Um, I'm going to go over there. Ugh, I'm sort of moseying my way over to get away from this. Um, you mose yourself to, down to the end of the bar as Slitch looks up. You see that 4X looks and says, Can I get the little guy a drink? And you see that, um, uh, you see that Slitch turns around and says, 20 big bottles of booze. One bottle of booze. Yay! Forex <laughs> <laughs> goes, I'm giving you a well, and takes something like off the well and hands it over. And you see Slitch goes, <sighs> If there's any service I can be, I would be more than happy. I have been working for some time as an aide to law enforcement. Great. Can you go invisible? Ah! Disappears. You see the bottle vanish and reappear with a clunk with about a quarter of the liquor missing. I think we can find service for you. (laughs) Now, if I worship you, with all my might. I will never die, baby. <laughs> all things die. Oh, no. <laughs> Little eyes are okay. <laughs> Little eyes are okay. <laughs> Demon, what it would it? Demon souls. Yeah? I'm talking to you. Oh, to me, yeah. yes. Demon <laughs> souls. Yeah. I don't transfer those. I don't take those. No, they go back to the abyss. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, you worship me. You live forever. (laughs) Hooray! I shall become the most potent demon. Very well. I shall be invisible. Do you wish anything for me that you do on your behalf? Just pop back in that vial. All right, great. You see, you uh, invisible, you hear a... And then the bottle of liquor clinks against the outside of the... Ah, No, nope, sorry. No! Um, (laughs) And you feel the demon once again in the little glass amulet. I, uh, as I walk behind a patron to head over to Salaha, Mm -hmm. I'm going to cast invisibility as I walk. Amazing. You cast invisibility, uh, as you approach Salaha, you walk up and see the stranger at the bar. You notice that there are a couple of barbed demons. You see that they are seated on these sort of marble cubes. You see that one of them like sits on a cushion and destroys it and gets up quickly and moves over to a sort of marble seat as an Eormaton comes over to like cast mending on the cushioned mm-hmm. seat. And you see the demons are sort of staring at the back of this guy at the bar, kind of licking their elongated oh. muzzles. Um, and you approach with feeling the invisible presence of your ally close behind. Uh, what do you do as you approach? I kind of approach him like, hello, stranger. I don't think I've seen you here before. The figure does not turn around to look at you. I kind of go and mosey on over and sit next to them. And I kind of get, I look at, what's he drinking again? This is just water, right? Just water. Like, what is that? My drink. Hmm. Yes, but what's in it? Nothing at the moment. Can I help you? I understand that you're the proprietor of this fine establishment. Oh, none of that nonsense, please. Let me help you first. What would you like to drink? Of those things which you can provide me. And you see, the figure has still made a point not to turn his face to you, staring straight ahead. Of those things which you can provide to me, that which I most thirst for would be solitude. Mm. <laughs> Funny place to pick for solitude here. Listen, I'm sorry, I never got your name. What is your name? I think it's time for me to go. And you see that the figure... As he goes to go, I'm going to command and cast command and say, sit. 
hell yeah, it's about to pop off. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 incredible. Um, so you're going to cast command. Yes. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba. Should be. Hell yeah. Let me know what kind of save that is. Uh, sure. It is a, it's a wisdom save of 19. Uh, what is your command? Uh, I think it's, it's, it's to, I think here it is. It's essentially halt. Halt. Um, the figure stands and stops suddenly, turns to look at you. Uh, you see gleaming golden eyes, a hairless head. You behold a planetar, one of the high angels of the celestial heights. Uh, you see the back that you believed to be hunched in drinking conceals a pair of mighty wings underneath his cloak as this dour angel moves to leave and is suddenly frozen in place. And I kind of stand as soon as I do and put my hand over his shoulder, caressing his face and be like, oh, you are beautiful. This was quite easy, wasn't it? Now I've heard from a few little birdies that you have been quite the bad angel. In this moment, a look of recognition dawns on the celestial's face. Uh, command, how long does command last for? Um, it's, uh, it's one round. One round. Six seconds. Um, as you say, bad angel, um, I'm gonna need both of you to roll initiative. Can you tell me? see you. Yeah. I need both of you to oh, roll shit. initiative. Um, here we go. Here we go. Oh, um, we're really God. good that our first Cosmic bar initiative fight. roll is against an angel. <laughs> <laughs> this is going well. Two gods and an angel walk into a bar. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, it's, what a great game of D&D. &D. We're fighting in a tavern. You know, that's what you want. Yeah. That's what you want at the end of the day. Um, 15. Um, 15, we got a 15 here, and what did we get for Amir? Eight. All right, great. Um, uh, well, the good news is eight, um, uh, eight is gonna beat a seven from our wow. buddy that did not roll great. Um, uh, Salaha, you're gonna be first to act. You see this celestial, uh, the cape bursts as wings spread out across the bar. It looks like he's going to try to just fly over the dance floor to the door. The nice thing about a speakeasy, however, is fundamentally that it is like built in a bunker. There's only one exit, mm. uh, but he's gonna make a run for it. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'm going to then... The bouncer is the door. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. The bouncer is the door. Yeah. That's what you call a doorman right there, yeah. <laughs> oh no. Oh, Here we go. Um, what does this do? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna use hold monster. Hell yes. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, what type of saving throw is hold monster? It's a wisdom. Nice wisdom. Okay. Um, this celestial has a very high wisdom. So I'm gonna let you know uh, what he has to roll on the die to hit that. And roll in front of the board. On an eight or higher, our celestial oh. saves against oh, hold monster. I wonder if I wonder if mm. I could use one of my meta magic effects. Yeah. No, I don't think I've got anything here. Does yeah. luck? I do have luck. Oh, you can wait till after he rolls for that. Yeah. I can't, does it apply? I don't, to know, I don't know. If only, it no, luck, luck will allow will allow you to tell. Uh, uh, him to reroll. Right, so yeah, yeah, you can you can you can, you can use luck to get him to reroll. Okay, cool. Oh, wow. um, luck is so, awesome. Uh, uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and we're gonna roll in front of the table. Uh, eight or higher saves. Fifteen. That's a save. I'm gonna use a lucky. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna use, I'm gonna a, use a lucky. Lucky. Reroll. Looking for that seven or lower. <laughs> 14. Oh, oh, boy. Um, you, uh, you go to cast Hold Monster um, and you feel vroom, uh, the power of this room like come to your call. You're keeping it, you're keeping it simple right now. You're just using your own sorceress magic. Vroom, uh, and you see that the celestial vroom, uh, surges forward as fast as he can. Um, that is going to be Amira's turn. Okay, I'm going to 
I'm going to bamf my boots of haste. Hell yes. All right. And I will... Should I do that? Yeah, why not? I'm gonna um, cast... Uh, oh God, yeah. I'm gonna cast Shadow Blade. <gasps> okay, sick. Hell yes. Um, you got a shadow blade, uh, invisibly, with sword, yeah. er, sword of shadow erupts around you. Um, and uh, uh, anything else from you on this turn? Yeah, since I cast them to Boots of Haste, I get one more action. Hell yeah, go for so, it. So, uh, ooh. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna hit him with it. <laughs> go for it, here we go. I'm gonna, so if I'm behind him in this moment, I'm invisible. Yes. So I get advantage, because I'm invisible attacking. Yes, you get advantage. Go ahead and roll your attack with advantage. Okay. Oh, that's good. <laughs> um, that would be a 29. 29 definitely hits. Okay. Hell yeah, go ahead and roll damage. Let's just do this. 4d8. Oh, it's not behaving. Okay, 4d8, one. There it is. Here you go. <laughs> 12 damage. Yes. Uh, great. Um, you slash out, deal 12 damage to this planetar. Uh, golden blood splatters across the bar. The planetar surges forward. Um, you are invisible right next to him. Uh, and so uh, uh, you are there as well. You don't happen to have the Warcaster feet, do you? I do. Okay. So. He leaves your threatened area. You get a second attack. Okay, because I'm also a warcaster. You're also a warcaster, which means you can attack, but you also both have the option to cast a spell yes. as he attempts to leave your threatened area. Um, so, okay. Um, so, do you want to act first, or should I act? Or should you go, you go. So, I'm... This is my domain, right? Yes. I'm and a god right now. You are surrounded by worship, so you can push the edges of the possible in this space. You were yeah. you were the wrong guy to be here when this dude tried this. So I think I'm I am literally going to to bend this. I'm going to and again, you can tell me this is crazy, but I'm literally going to bend the reality of this space and sh the door that was essentially. Um, of the, the Aeomaton yeah. is going to just open wide, but like a, this, you just see this mouth just sort of erupt from this door to, as it kind of goes towards it and it's just going to clasp onto him and, and like, capture him in this like crystalline cage. Unbelievable. For those watching at home, uh, it is an established game mechanic in our world that in areas of like holiness or temples or things like that, we push the bounds of the possible. I'm going to uh, use your other DC that I have marked down here, and we're going to roll this. And I think this is actually going to be a dexterity saving throw, which now means that our friend has to roll a 17 or higher on the die. That is a seven. Uh, you, uh, so you watch and Salaha, as you stand, golden, exquisite, a body crafted by mortal hands in perfect symmetry. You live in this world as the ultimate achievement of that which you most wished, the artistry and beauty of mortals. Ages ago, the divine touched the real, and your living form is the real reaching back, hand in hand, two dancers twirling in the stars forever. You see a vision far past here, unable to join the city of Aeor, but thrumming in the heart of Exandria. The arch heart beats. Whoa. The Aormaton door spins, revealing an extra-dimensional chamber, a false hallway. Shroom, shroom. And suddenly, silence fades over this space uh, within the Ars Elysia as this angel flies and is suddenly stretched through space and light and gone. And you hear silence as Chorus goes, 
Sorry for the interruption, everybody. Let's get this band playing again. Two, three, four. The music picks up as you see your friend at the door, uh, uh, ZVX, uh, the uh, uh, the Aormaton doorman. <laughs> Big mouthful, boss. Mm. Got him down there. Mm -hmm. We'll be joining him shortly. Uh, you see that uh, as this unfolds, what everyone, you witnessed this true thing, what everyone else here witnessed was a guy jump up from the bar, rush to the door, and kind of disappear in a flash of light as something shocking but unclear. And you see that uh, Tuar quickly comes over, the dancer, and says, <laughs> gets rowdy after midnight, and begins to clean up the golden blood off the bar. Uh, Letta. Uh, you, uh, give me a perception check. Oh, <laughs> oh, shit. God damn it, I suck at perception! <laughs> um, me, God, me damn it! Um, <laughs> eight. Uh, eight, okay, gotcha. Um, uh, you, uh, you look, and, uh, on an eight perception, you look, and let us know where to be found. Whatever she's up to, you have no idea. Mm -hmm. But you look and see the three demons that were kind of looking, you realize those three demons were sort of like, maybe we'll beat the shit out of this angel. You see that all of them look, and each just kind of look frightened at Salaha and like raise a glass and get up and excuse themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, so, um, shall we go join our guest? <laughs> Shadowblade goes away. Of course. Mm. Uh, and you guys head off towards the door. Uh, sorry to do this a little bit early, but I need a bio break. So we're gonna call it there, <laughs> little bio. A message from your Critical Role lore keeper, Danny Carr. 
We here at Critical Role know that life happens. Sometimes your friend becomes a rampaging werewolf that you gotta calm down. Sometimes your other friend needs help dealing with a dead lady in her head. We get it. And when life happens, we're not always able to watch four to five hours of Critical Role a week. That's why our lore department has been working tirelessly to find a way to make it both easier and faster to consume Critical Role's main campaign without losing that rich and vibrant tapestry of story and lore the Critter community has come to love. And after countless hours of hard work, we are happy to announce that we have found that way. Introducing Critical Role Abridged. Each episode of this Lorekeeper approved series has been carefully crafted by an incredibly devoted team to include everything you need to know to follow the Bell's House stories all in about one hour. We've even added new pieces of artwork, bringing characters, items, and moments to life thanks to the help of our amazing community of artists from around the world. The time is now to begin your Critical Role catch-up with abridged episodes of the Bell's Hells campaign. New episodes air every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific on YouTube. Beacon members receive two new episodes dropping every week on Tuesdays and Fridays. Laura Bailey here to guide you through what's new in the Critical Role shop. Roll an investigation if you want. It's basically perfect. Style should never be a dumb stat, darling. You need this? You probably need this. This is pretty badass. Could anything be more perfect? Traveler only says impulse purchases are a good decision. Oh my gosh, it's so amazing. Go ahead, darling. Treat yourself. And hey, if you want, you could head over to the Critical Role shop right now.